Hello and welcome to 58 Showcase. It's a very special one today when I'm actually introducing Isawa. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Uh, in, in my very, very favorite topic, uh, actually two topics, hormones and functional medicine. Like, probably the thing that I feel more passionate about in everything I do around the being. So really, really happy to see you today, Isawa. Thank you. And, um, Tell us a bit about yourself. So, um, my name is Ghazala Z. Scott. I'm the clinical lead doctor at the Mary and Gluck Clinic. So, at the Mary and Gluck Clinic, we largely specialise in bioidentical hormone balancing, and recently we've introduced functional medicine to the clinic. Um, and I work with a team of nine other doctors who are highly experienced clinicians, and uh, we aim to bring hormonal balance to both men and women. Um, and we look at um, a, a person's health in terms of um, an intuitive perspective and from a holistic point of view. Thank you. Uh, I think one of the key questions that I always had and I'm hearing a lot meeting people around hormones is like, what's the real difference between HRT and bioidentical hormones? So like sure. BHRT. Or... Sure. So bioidentical hormones have actually been around um, for, a, for a number of years, for decades really. But initially, um, hormone replacement was um, synthetic hormones that were derived from the urine of pregnant horses. And those synthetic hormones had a lot of side effects, but they were marketed by pharmaceutical companies um, as um, you know, a universal treatment for women in the menopause. So, um, so, so largely, historically, people have been given synthetic HRTs. Um, bioidentical HRT has been going on for a while as well, but the mainstream is synthetic HRT. And then, um, in 2015, NICE guidelines recognised that actually bioidentical hormones were the way forward. So even on the NHS, they're recommending people should be on synthetic HRTs that are taken orally, but should be on bioidentical hormone replacement. So in the NHS, we have what we call the body identical HRT. So body identical HRT is bioidentical, but it means that the preparations that are available um, on the NHS are standardised doses. So estrogen can be given as a patch or a gel or a spray, and natural progesterone is only given as an oral capsule at night. Testosterone is still unlicensed for women on the NHS, so it's very difficult for women to get the right treatment, and a lot of the preparations are preparations that may, men use, so they're at much higher doses, and it's very hard to dose those accurately. And other hormones that we also replace, such as DHEA, are not available on the NHS. So bioidentical hormone replacement therapy that we do at the Mary and Gluck Clinic is actually compounding the hormones specific to each woman. And we look at the balance of hormones overall in the woman's body. So we look at estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and we look at DHEA. And having a physiological balance of all of those things provides a much better balance for the body and people feel much better. Bioidentical hormones themselves have the same structure as um, our own natural hormones, same chemical structure. So they're tolerated much better. They're physiologically much more similar to the body. So the advantage of the Marion Gluck Clinic is that we personalise the doses according to each woman. The way we can administer the treatment can vary from creams to lozenges to capsules. So we choose the treatment that works best for each woman. Um, and we also look at their health as a whole. So that's the difference between body identical and bio identical. And is it only for menopause or is it to support with fertility and with yeah, other, so, other so, hormonal issues? So actually bioidentical hormones have huge applications in lots of women's health problems. So we can actually use them to, in applications for polycystic ovarian syndrome, PMS or PMDD. We use them in endometriosis. Um, and we also use only progesterone in the perimenopausal phase when women can be quite estrogen dominant. So they don't need estrogen, they only need progesterone. So we look at everyone's hormones in quite a bit of detail to make sure that we're giving them the correct treatment. And also monitor them because obviously the situation can change. So if you're perimenopausal, after a year or two, you'll become menopausal and then your hormonal situation and needs will change. And so we adapt accordingly. When would a person needs to decide, okay, now I need to come and see a, a hormonal therapy a practitioner? 
Is it after having symptoms? What if they don't have symptoms? Is it an age? Yeah. When do you make that decision? I think it's good for women to have a general education about their hormones and understand that each decade of your life, the pattern of your hormones will change. So really, in your early 40s, you may start becoming a bit more perimenopausal. And what that means is that you will have, your cycles may become a bit more irregular, they may become a bit more heavy, and you may have some anovulatory cycles, so you may, might start missing periods. So a lot of women don't realise the symptoms. So the symptoms would be that you're having insomnia, you're more anxious, you might have put on weight, you might have breast tenderness. So uh, those are the symptoms of the perimenopause and they can happen in your early 40s and they can extend until your late 40s until you hit the peri uh, until you hit the menopause. So it's good for people to have an awareness of what those symptoms might be. Because women are so busy at this period of their lives in their 40s, they very often are stressed, they have so many other responsibilities that they very often don't focus on their own bodily symptoms. So it's good for them to just stop and think about actually how do I feel, what is happening with my periods, and you know, should I seek some help? And very often we can advise people how to support their hormonal health in this period of time. They may not need additional hormones, but they may need additional lifestyle factors, they may need stress management, they may, may need other things to support their hormones. So I think education and seeking advice um, is, is really, really important. So we talked a lot about women. Uh, is it for men as well? Absolutely. So all women go through the perimenopause and menopause, but many men also go through um, what we call the andropause. So the andropause is when levels of testosterone and DHEA, which is another male type of hormone or androgen, will go down with age. Now with men, there is a huge link between their metabolic health and their general health and their levels of testosterone. So a lot of high-powered executives, people in really stressful jobs, very often, because their cortisol, their stress hormone is so dysregulated, that will impact their testosterone. But a lot of men will have a natural decline with age and will start feeling the symptoms um, of low testosterone. And we can do testing, we can advise about their general health, and for many men, replacing their testosterone and their DHEA can actually significantly improve their quality of life. If someone starts taking bioidentical hormones, is it something they take for the rest of their life? Well, the bioidentical hormones that we, we give women, in the perimenopausal and menopausal phase, they will very often really help with the acute symptoms. So they will help with the hot flushes, the insomnia, the night sweats. But um, the, um, hormone replacement also has huge long-term benefits for your health. So we know that it protects your brain, so we know that women are less likely to have degenerative brain conditions like dementia, protects your bones, so it reduces your risk of osteoporosis and osteoporotic fractures in later life, and it also supports your heart health. So although your short-term symptoms may be better, the long-term benefits of HRT are, are really, really important. And now that women are living a lot longer, an average woman born today will live until she's 100. So we know that if the average age of menopause is 51, then we know that you're going to spend 50% of your life in the menopause. So we don't have to just look at lifespan, we have to also look at the health span. We have to make sure that those later years are good quality years and that you know you maintain your energy and your health for a longer period of time. Um, and, and that's where you know, long-term HRT can be really beneficial. And provided you're taking the right form of HRT, you can take it long-term. There's no cut-off um, for it. Um, and what I tend to do, you know, women who I'm seeing who are in their 60s and 70s and they've been taking it for a certain period of time, I tend to tail down their doses to make it more physiological for their age. So that's the benefit of compounding is that I'm able to reduce their doses significantly rather than a one-size-fits-all and just tailor their HRT to minimise um, the side effects and uh, the long-term problems with you know, taking hormonal treatment and make sure that we optimise their health for the future. With functional medicine or overall integration with nutrition, um, that actually, everything is very personalized. Mm. We all know that functional medicine cannot think, fit all because we all function differently mm. and our body functions differently. And I love the idea that with bioidentical hormones, you do so much personalization and you are an expert in functional medicine as well and bringing it with your team to, uh, to the practice. How does that integration actually work? 
Well, what we know is that our sex hormones don't exist in isolation. So we know that sex hormones are impacted by thyroid hormones and stress hormones. So we can look at all the different endocrine systems in within functional medicine and we can look to see how those other hormone systems may be having an impact on your sex hormones. For instance, a lot of women are very, very stressed out and they become quite adrenally dysregulated. So their stress hormone patterns are not um, as they should be, where you have a low, you know, you wake up with a, a normal cortisol, it rises um, when you first wake up within an hour and then it comes down to, to a, a low level by the evening. So very often their patterns are very, very dysregulated and that dysregulation of cortisol then has a massive impact on their stress hormone, on, on their sex hormones. So that's one aspect of functional medicine. The other thing is looking at how we metabolize our hormones. So I can be giving you HRT, but I want to make sure that you are clearing it from your body correctly. So for instance, um, estrogen is detoxifying in the liver. So if you are drinking a lot of alcohol and you're overweight and your liver is under pressure, taking hormones can be detrimental because then your liver has to work hard to clear all of these substances from your body. So we need to make sure that your liver health is optimized, your weight is optimized, insulin resistance comes from increased weight, that your blood sugar levels are optimized. And then we also have to look at gut health because hormones are cleared, um, estrogen is cleared from the gut um, and the balance of gut bacteria are really, really important in this. So good gut health also supports good hormonal balance. So I think it's functional medicine enables me to look at the person as a whole and to optimize all aspects of their endocrine system um, to, to make sure that you know, we get them to the peak health that they, they would like. And it's actually living healthier for longer and happier. Absolutely. So that's, that's the main thing. And I have a good quality of life. Yes. Uh, my last question is actually a very different one. Um, you, you guys, you, you and, and the, the rest of the team went home back all of us during COVID and doing a lot of the consultation uh, during Zoom, like a lot of people doing, and you and, and many of your clients decided this is time to come back and you came, came back to see clients and you decided to do it in 58. So my question is, why 58? Well, it's a wonderful atmosphere here. It's got a really wonderful energy um, and it's a very, very central location. The rooms are just very cosy. So I really find that, you know, it helps me connect with my patients better. We still have a hybrid model where, you know, we've been able to access people all over the country and offer them our amazing bioidentical hormones. So, you know, we still can do video consultations, we can do telephone consultations, but for me, I find doing an initial consultation in person where I can connect with the patient, really understand them, um, have that energetic exchange is, is just uh, next to none. And this really provides me with the ideal environment um, and lovely work colleagues. Thank you. It's lovely having you with us today and of course having you with us at 58. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. much. Thank you.